to feel your presence. I need to know your power. Feel me now with more of you. Oh, I need to see your glory. I want to know your will. So would you please come and fill this place? Because I need fresh soil from you. Cover my life with your dew. Rain down refreshing anew from above. I need your presence today. Please come and show me the way. Shower down your rain upon me. Make me more and more like Jesus. Have your way in me so that the world may see. You are the porter. I am just the place. So hold me and shape me completely into what you want me to be. And I'll be changed from glory into glory. I need fresh oil from you. Cover my life with your dew. Rain down, refreshing anew from above. I need your presence today. Please come and show me the way. Shower down your rain upon me. Make me more and more like Jesus Christ. I need fresh oil from you. Cover my life with your dew. Rain down refreshing anew. Let it rain down from above. I need your presence today. Please come and show me the way. Shower down your rain upon me. Make me more and more like Jesus. Oh, yes. Shower down your rain upon me. I want to be more and more like Jesus Christ. So shower down your presence upon me. Make me more and more like Jesus
wake me up from my sleeping and you know just what I'll be needing cause I want to talk to you and lead me early guide me early talk to me oh Let the storm rise Let things happen in the middle of the night When morning comes I will be alright Cause I wanna talk to you You oh. Teach me Lord today Should I go or should I stay right here Guide me on your way Cause I wanna talk to you Talk to you. Hey, 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 yeah. I need your direction, Lord. I need your protection, Lord. All I ask, all I ask is for you to direct my path. I need your direction, Lord. I need your protection, yes. All I ask and all I ask is for you, for you to direct my path. Show me early in the morning. Lead me early in the morning. Talk to me early in the morning. I want you to direct my path. I need to look in the direction Lord and we need your protection Lord so all we ask and all we ask is for you to direct our times in the garden if it be your will oh Lord let this cup pass over me but he said nevertheless not my will be done but your will be done Lord I will accept your perfect will for my life today Cause you hold my destiny You have a purpose for me And you have a plan for me I want to follow your way I love your perfect will I love the plans you have for me I just love the mystery of your will Just 
just take my hand and stay with me oh lord i trust in your will i believe in your word i'll go all the way lord i will accept your perfect will for my life today because you hold my destiny you have a purpose for me oh you have a plan for me i want to follow your will one more time you hold my destiny oh you have a purpose for me yes and you have a plan for me yes i want to follow your will Every day, every night, when I'm down on my knees, praying to you, that your will may be done and your purpose fulfilled in my life. I will follow where you go, I'll follow. I will do what you say, Lord, I'll follow. I will listen to your voice, I'll follow. Hold my destiny, yeah. You have a purpose for me. Oh, you have a plan for me, yes, Lord. I want to follow your will. Do you know that He holds your destiny, yeah? And He has a purpose for you, oh, and He's got a plan for you. you say it's all right i follow your will oh it's all right i'll do what you say it's all right i follow you follow you all right i'll do what you say it's all right i follow your will jesus it's all right i'll do what you say it's all right i follow you Cause you hold my destiny and you have a purpose for me you have a plan for me I want to follow your will Hallelujah. Are you enjoying the music? Do you want more music? Wow. You hold my destiny. Fantastic. Right. Today I want to talk about the enemies of ministry. Enemies of ministry. And it's all found in... Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We are actually studying one verse in the Bible at the camp. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 1. It says, Therefore, seeing that we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. Amen. Amen. So seeing that we have this ministry, yesterday I was proving to you that you do have a ministry. Amen. And I was explaining to you that once you receive mercy, you must work for the person who showed you mercy. Is it not true? And I told you the story of how the Germans spies were arrested as soon as they landed in England. They were shown, we hang you tomorrow morning or you work for us. And when they were shown the mercy, they said, okay, we work for you. It was compulsory mercy and compulsory work. Amen. And he says, what are we supposed to do with this ministry? 
that we have received. You know, we, we must not receive this ministry in vain. Amen. We must be devoted to it. We must be devoted to it. And now, we are, this is our 20th anniversary. We are celebrating 20 years. And what are we going to say to ourselves at this 20 years? Are we going to congratulate ourselves? No. We're going to say shame on ourselves. That we didn't fill the whole of America with churches in 20 years. That 20 years came to pass and we were not able to fill, put churches in every state. So instead of having a party to celebrate, we must cry and pray for forgiveness. Amen. So that God will give us some extension. You see, by now we should have been besting at the borders of North America to Latin uh, Central America. And people should have been saying, listen, we have no anywhere again. We don't know where to go. It's the next place is Mexico. Isn't it? And where again after Mexico? Costa Rica. Is that the next place after Mexico? You don't know the geography. <laughs> because you haven't thought of being a missionary. You have not been checking the maps. You should have checked your map by now. Amen. Are you listening? So since we have received mercy, we are not going to be tired. And I was showing you yesterday that mercy is seen in the fact that you are alive. That you are well. And that you are here. Amen. Wow. Now, verse 2. We have, he says, but. You see, he was explaining what he has done to be in the ministry. We have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Amen. This is what he has done. He has, he has done what? renounced the hidden things of dishonesty in order to be in the ministry. He has renounced hidden things of dishonesty. And then number two, he has not walked in craftiness. He's not too clever. You see, when you are too clever, you can't be doing well in the ministry because you, you, you are too fast, too clever, crafty. You know everything. You know what is going to be said next. And you know why he's going to say that. And you know the story he's going to tell in relation to that. And you know the antidote to that thing. It is more of the antidote you have. But you don't analyze yourself to know that you have an antidote to the message. Antidote means something that cancels that message. Is it not too loud here? It's okay? All right. Then maybe here. All right. Because you are so clever. You see, when you are too clever, when you are so clever, all right, that you, you know too much, you sometimes rather become a fool. You know all the messages. You know everything, but actually, you know nothing. You see, a camp is a very serious thing. Listening to a camp, to listen to jokes and funny aspects, and to have a laugh or two, you have missed the reason why the camp was there. Because for me, I'm, I'm very serious about what I'm doing. 
There's no joke in any of the things I'm doing. If it is a joke to you, then you've missed the point. So we are very serious. And you must be very, very serious also. When you are listening to a camp message, you must ask yourself, what is God saying? And what am I supposed to do? I can't be hearing things and never listening to, the, to obeying the Lord. Amen. So the first important area that Paul explained. Let's read verse 1 and 2. No, let's read from verse 1. He says, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 1. Therefore, seeing that we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. You see, we've received the ministry in corresponding to the mercy that God has given to us. We have decided not to faint or be discouraged or give up. Rather, we'll be devoted. Rather, we'll not take it in vain. Rather, we'll pay attention to it. Rather, we'll fulfill it. Okay, we'll work hard. Then he says, but what else, what else did he do to be in the ministry? He says, I've renounced hidden things of dishonesty. Okay. Now, amazingly, it is hidden things that make us unfruitful or that make the ministry not work. You see, when I come and I stand here and I ask for why are we not in um, all the states in America having more churches, winning more souls. If I ask why, the real reasons are hidden things. (laughs) Hidden things and they are of dishonesty. The reason why they are of dishonesty is because we are often not honest about the hidden things that are the real reasons why we are not doing the will of God. Yes. So, as for Paul, he said, for me, I renounced all the hidden issues. And that's how come I'm able to do well in the ministry. I've just, I've just, I've just given up all the hidden things. That is why it is important for us to communicate. Amen. Amen. It is important for us to communicate. It is important for us to be open. Amen. Amen. Because hidden things greatly, greatly affect all that we are doing and that we are trying to do. Is there anybody outside? Nobody outside? Okay. Amen. Amen. Now, what are these hidden things? that greatly affect um, our ministry. Okay. Turn with me to Second Peter. Second Peter, chapter 1. Second Peter, chapter 1. And verse number 5. Second Peter, number 1. Second Peter number one, chapter five, verse five. Second Peter one, verse five. It says, and besides all this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, yeah. and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. 
How many of us ladies here want to be barren? I don't think anybody wants to be barren. Not have a child. No. Everybody wants to have a child. Now look at the number of things. Go back to verse 5. That need to be in you so that you will avoid barrenness. Hmm? Number one is what? Diligence. Faith. Virtue. Knowledge. Patience. Godliness. Brotherly kindness. Charity. So many things. Small fruitfulness that you will be. There's a lot of things. (laughs) <laughs> isn't it amazing it is not one thing but several small small things make you need you need to have before you are fruitful so as a church you know the, you see we are celebrating 20 years of being around what's are the things that have not let us fulfill our mandate in 20 years that we've been here. Hidden things. Yeah, hidden things. Small, small things. And look at what he says. He gives a long list of small, small things. Diligence, faith, virtue, this, this, that, that. So many things. You know? So, and they are often hidden things. Amen? Is it not true? So now the question that we have to ask ourselves is, when a woman is not able to have a child, or a couple is not able to have a child, if you are a pastor, sooner or later you will come across something like that. Because not every woman has a child. Ideally, Every woman should have a child, but it's not so in real life. That is why it's like everybody should have eyes, but not everybody has eyes. True. Not everybody can see. Ideally, everybody should see. Not having a child is one of the many things that we have in the world. It's like, it's like death. It's one of the things that is part of the society. And you have to grow up to know that it is part of our lives. It's just like how not everybody gets married. Ideally, everybody gets married. But it's not an ideal world. Now, in order to understand why many times we struggle with having fruits, We have always to look at hidden things. You see, somebody can be walking on the road. You cannot know the real reason why this person is having this problem. When I met Stevie Wonder, I asked him how he became blind. You know, and then he started to tell me we had to go. But he told me a little but you, you will be surprised at the reason, the hidden reason for the problems that we experience in our lives. Amen. Now, one of the things, are you, are you feeling sleepy? No. Are, are you all right? Everything okay? Okay. Is there a mention in the church? <laughs> Tell somebody, did you learn a new word yesterday? Mention. Mean shit in the church. <laughs> now, what I'm sharing with you now is the reason why um, the hidden things, reasons why it's difficult sometimes to have fruits. Amen. Sometimes it's difficult to have children. A lighthouse to have fruits in the whole of America and the whole of Central America. 
Number one, these are the hidden enemies of our fruitfulness. Number one, lack of youthfulness. Lack of youthfulness. Now, you need to be young to have a baby. Barbara, have you finished having babies? So one more is coming. No more? But when you were younger, you wouldn't have said that. You would have smiled sheepishly. (laughs) And the next time I see you, you'll be pregnant. Because you know what you are doing. But when you are older, you come up with reasons you don't want it. Isn't it? So you need to be young to have babies. Amen. 25 years old is usually the peak of your fertility. Yeah. 25. And it starts to decline after that. Hmm. Are you still around? Yeah. Yeah. 25 is the peak. Now, every woman is born into this world with a set of eggs. I don't know if you, do they put eggs in crates here in America? Like crates like that? Yeah, so every woman is born with a set of eggs all the way up to here, square like this. You have it like that, in crates, in your ovary. Yeah, so you have one set of crates of eggs on the right and one set of crates of eggs on the left. They are not created every, every year. It, 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 you are born with the eggs you have. So... By the time you are, every, when you start to have your period, every month you give up one of the eggs from the crate. One of the eggs from the right. The next month, you serve another one, fried egg. The next one, boiled egg. The next one, poached egg. Every month you give one of the eggs. Like that. Omelette. Yes. And sometimes, two. Now, because no new egg is created, as the eggs stay there, Now the eggs are 35 years old. 42 years old eggs that have been in the crates for 42 years. Then you see that the egg will be there then it will change like this. Things will shift within the eggs. Then when you, yes, because even in the shop they would have given you that these eggs are expired. So as you get older, I see that the eggs are older and they twisted like that. So then when you are frying it or you give it, I realize that mm, something is wrong. The whole thing has mixed up in a way. Hey! So you find out that from a certain age, then you start to give birth to abnormalities. Then you see that it's twisted like this. 
when the child came, he realized that oh, this leg is shorter. Or the heart has got something, a hole somewhere, or some complex. It was joining, but it's like the egg was, it was so old that it just did another adjustment. Or the brain is not as it should be. And one of the commonest is the Down syndrome. Yeah. I visited a pastor once and um, I was sitting there when one of his children came. Instead of the child to greet us normally, he started to smile foolishly (laughs) and sing. And he, he said to his son, say hello to Uncle Doug. <laughs> and then he went and he told me, Is everybody in the area likes him. But he likes singing. Yeah. And he said, look, I told my wife, three children is enough. She insisted. We are old. She insisted. Look at look at look at what we have. Ah. It's a, a Down syndrome. Yeah. But from a certain age, from thirty five upwards, you see that the chances is ten times more that the child will come and it's like it's a little adjusted. You see. So when you wait too long to do the ministry, see that later when you start the whole thing is a down it's a down syndrome ministry because you have waited. <laughs> you have waited too long yeah, to start what God has put in your heart to do. You've waited and waited and waited. You see that now it's an adjustment. And then you are trying to force something. Look at this church. This is, this, is, this is 20 years effort. 20 years effort. Supposing we are now coming to start. And say, we want to be like Lighthouse. You are now coming to start. Do you know how, how quickly it takes to be where we are? Even us, we have been struggling for 20 years. Look at where we are. Several camps, meetings upon meetings upon meetings. Hey, traveling, shuffling, conference, these issues. Hey, meetings. Hmm? And you want to come and quickly be where somebody is after he has struggled for 20 years. Before you realize, you start doing something wrong. Yeah. That is why the ministry is something you start early. Look. Childbearing is done early, as early as possible. Ladies, if you are marrying, you are going to start, just strike, pa, 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 and then it's over. Don't say, well, I'm, I'm waiting, I want to do this. Before you realize, the egg has become like this, and the egg is moving like this. For fertilization. <laughs> hey! Yeah. So you see, your youthfulness, your age is very important. That is why in encouraging the young people to work for God, I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm rather doing what is right because it's going to take your whole life to achieve anything for God. Even your own personal life. How long does it take to get stable? The television in your house is not a debt. Do you understand? It's for you. It takes a long time. Isn't it true? To buy your own television, to buy your own fridge, and your own chairs. It takes time. Yeah. The whole of this work that we are talking about involves the whole life. That is why pastors, you must encourage the people at the youngest possible age where you can see this person is mature and knows what is bad things in the world he must be able to know what are good things and let them speak. After all, we always thought we knew 
everything. We were young. Amen. Andy, how old were you when you came to Canada? 32 years old. Yeah. You see? 32. You were very young. You came from um, um, England as a missionary. It's a mission. And you have been there. And how old are you now? 47. That's 15 years. Been in Canada. And you were a pastor for how many years in England? Maybe about five years? Three years. Three years. Yes. It takes a long time. So what you have, what, what you have achieved... You know, that's what can be achieved. You see, what I want you to do is that when I'm traveling, you see that I'm going somewhere to preach. Come also. When you come, you you see so many things. And you even become encouraged. You come and say, well, oh, this was somebody, the the mind is not bad at all, you know. Because sometimes we always think, because as I'm here, obviously I'm not coming here to praise you. My duty is not to praise you. Praises is in heaven. Do you understand? But occasionally you see certain things. Oh, what you are doing is not bad at all. Let's press on and do some more. Yeah. Traveling is very, very good. It heals your heart and it encourages you, sometimes discourages you, but it is good. <laughs> Amen? Amen? So, my friend, let's start it young. Look, either you use your life for bad things or for good things. The younger you start, the better. That's why today people donate eggs. They donate eggs. Like if you want to have a child at a certain age, you can have a donation of an egg. A fresh egg. Do you understand what I'm saying? A fresh egg. And now that we have 20 years have gone by, we need some fresh eggs in the church. I want to see some fresh, fresh faces. Fresh eggs. That are being released. Yes. Because some of us are, we are too old. Not that we are too old for that. But it's a little more difficult. Yes. And complicated. Yeah. I, I am a specialist at frying eggs. Yeah. When, when my wife sees me in the kitchen coming to fry eggs for my daughter or for whoever is there. She, 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 she steps back. She knows that the master is here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is the only thing I can do. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's the only thing I can do. And at least it's just one thing. Some of you cannot do even what I, what I can do. So be careful when you are laughing at me. And one of the things, when I crack the egg and I open, I see the egg. There are different types of eggs. Hey! You see that even the color of the yolk is almost white. Where I come from, some of the good wives. <laughs> some of them, you, 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 you would expect the yolk to be defined. But it's like it's just mixed with the things. Hey, this egg, what is wrong with this egg? Is it a good egg? Sometimes you crack it, you see that as if the chicken was trying to start coming. Hey! Huh? Yeah. See that the chicken is coming. It's trying to turn into a chicken. Wow. So I pray for you, you know. Pastors, you see, remember, if you are my disciples, remember how I encourage you. Hmm? Stay. Remember? But you were not in Chicago before. You were, where were you? Iowa. Iowa. I would encourage you, go. 
You should remember all these places you are. Sometimes there was a lot of encouragement. Some of you, you went on your own, but still you are there. And you started churches. Remember, even when you were becoming pastors, you didn't want to become a pastor. A lot of you have quarreled with me over this thing. But you are not happy that you are pastors. Is it not true? Now there's me, Shea, in the church. Listen, I want you to release your young people because it takes a young person. Young people, don't worry. That energy you feel in you is necessary for fruit bearing. Youthfulness is necessary, not old age. Rather, old age brings forth these abnormalities. Yeah. Be careful. Number two. Excitement. Excitement is necessary. It's one of the hidden things that is absent. Do you see? And that's what Paul says, I have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. Like, I won't admit it. Now, what are the hidden things of dishonesty? One of the hidden things is the lack of youthfulness. Because I'm sure you would, you would, you would, because you realize that most of us who are older, either you have a mortgage, you have some connection, you have some, something that links you to where you are in such a complicated way that you cannot easily go. But a younger person, the eggs are free. Free eggs. You can easily just go. Pack your mug and go. And once you get older, the egg is now complex. Complexly related to other things. So you may even have a desire. Tell you, I'm leaving, but uh, you are leaving to where? You cannot just go now. You can't just go now. Pulling you and stay, sit down here, sit down. But the younger people who have not yet got a mortgage, have not yet done this, have not yet done so many things, it is your turn to go. Yeah. Excitement is the next thing. When people cannot have children, many times, one of the reasons is a lack of excitement. Because it is excitement that leads to erections. Without excitement, you cannot have an erection. Do you understand erection when I say erection? You can explain it? Who said you can explain it? Who needs explanation? Without excitement, there will be no erection. And without erection, the thing that has to go in to pour the seeds in cannot enter because it needs the erection. And the erection needs the excitement. Oh, well, Pastor, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that that is what... No, it is. Haven't you heard of Viagra? What is Viagra used to treat? Viagra is used to treat the problem that the person has a desire to do it, but does not have the excitement. Or does, so he has, it's like, I want to, but the, 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 the erection, you see, like when people are young, they are excited. They have erection easily. Easy, you'll be there and I'll say, boom! Hey! <laughs> hey! But as they get older, sometimes they have been, mar- or, or when people marry f- f- newly, there's a lot of excitement. There is no provocation. Sometimes one of my, some, when my young, um, uh, y- young people get married, they'll be sending me texts. 
we have already done it 11 times. <laughs> but there is me set in the marriage. Me set in the marriage. <laughs> we have done it seven times already. By the morning, six times. There is me share in the marriage. But these same people, you meet them later and you ask them, when was the last time? And they'll be calculated. So, I'm sure it must be this year. This year. This year. This year. This, oh, yes, it was this year. It was in January. It was in January. The same people. Wow. So it must be this year. Oh, yes. Once in January and once in, in February. Uh-huh. So, what is it that has gone down? Excitement. You see? And when you stay around in church for a long time, analyzing, Questioning, calculating, and recalculating, and reassessing. Your excitement goes down for the mission. The initial joy that you had, Charlie, let's go all out for God, all the way, no question. Charlie, let's let's just move. After a while, all those things go down. I said, look, think about what you are doing carefully. Look, let's, let's, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. And that is why people lie by each other. And you sit down and you say that this person who's quarreling with me, this person who's doing it, they start to think. When the person touches you like that, touches you, you say, hmm. <laughs> There's no excitement. The excitement is gone. You are thinking. You say you love me. Look at what you say. Look at what you did. Look at this. This and that. And you are there. Hmm. Hmm. You have become like a, a five kilos of beef that are just li- lying there. Excitement is gone out of you. Thinking and thinking and rethinking and reanalyzing and rethinking. You are all there. Yeah. You see, when you sit down and think, that's why, that is why the word says, today, if you hear the word of God, today, hacking, obey, today. If I had waited to analyze, where would my children go to school? I never knew that my child, one of my children, would become a doctor. Today, my, my daughter, even my little daughter, is in the medical school. I just thank God. Well, when they were going to school, I never thought about it. When my wife even asked me, where will they go to school? This was nursery school. I said, I don't know. I'm sure they will get a school. <laughs> and she kept on saying, so well, not, not in the future, when it was time. I said, find a school. And my school, at my nursery school, I think it has been closed down. The, the one I attended. <laughs> <laughs> so she found one in the area. And she told me she has seen a a new school that is starting called Christ Ambassadors. And there was no member in the school. I said, I'm sure it's a good school. Let them go there. Yeah. So my son was a founder of a school. Why not? It's not a problem. It's not a problem. I was just thinking about all that. How do they become in the future? That's why I'm, I'm so surprised. I have two, two children in medical school today. Yeah. It was, not, it was not my plan at all. I never knew that all, I would never thought through all those things. When you think through, as they are touching, they are hold, holding you. you are hold. Annie? Annie? Mm. Annie? Mm. Annie, mm. that's all. It's finished. Charlie, let's sleep. There is no me share in the house. 
So you see, old people, they lie by each other like wawa logs and odum logs on a track that are going to the harbor. They lie like dead bodies. But young people, wow, there is Misha in the house. That's why you see you should marry young. Don't wait too long to marry. Because when you marry your middle age, people who marry when they are older, they don't marry usually out of love. They marry out of calculation. Yeah. I don't see how I can fall in love with anybody again. I know too much to fall in love. If I was ever to have to marry again, I would marry out. I would tell you, I don't love you. You must know that I don't love you. But I need some. My house is quiet. Come and stay there. I cannot, I cannot fall in love again. I mean, it's past. All those things are past. Hey. Yeah. How can I fall in love with you? I have already loved one person. It's enough. I don't, I look, I don't love you. Are you, you have, there's space. You can come. easy to, to this, this falling in love thing. No, 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 no. To be excited again. I mean, at a mature person, you are so excited at your age. <laughs> you, you yourself, you will not be excited. No, no, I know too much to be excited. Yeah. You know, but when you are young, when you are young, you get what I'm saying? There's some natural excitement. We are going to Guatemala. We are going to Guatemala. What are we going to do there? I don't know. We are going. Why are we going? We are going. We are going. We are going. Heaven knows where we are going. We know we will. Yeah. And we know God will take care of us. And we go. That, that, you see, it is the absence of this. It's the absence. That's why I said they are hidden. We will not honestly say you know, you don't honestly come and tell me, Bishop, I'm not excited anymore about the work of God. Bishop, I'm, I'm too old for the work of God. Nobody will admit it. That's why I call the hidden things of dishonesty. That we are not honest to say that, Charlie, I am not, I don't feel young enough. I'm too old. If, you, you can't even say those words, I'm too old. At the age of 40 something, you say, I'm old. How? Are you ready to die? But you see, actually, that is the hidden reality that we are, we feel too old and we are too old. And the reality is that we are not excited. We have had too much time to think through. And too much thinking has made us quench. Yes. Yeah. No erection. It always remember, you see, erection doesn't mean sexual desire. Don't, don't equate the two. You have to understand your body. It doesn't mean sexual desire. The desire is different from the erection. That is why men have a lot of desire. And they buy the drug to help them have the excitement that brings the erection. Well, they, they want to do it, but there's no... And so sometimes, as I'm preaching here, a lot of older pastors, hey, it's true, I want to do it, but... <laughs> there's no... There's no... There. There's no the natural excitement for what you are saying is not there, but they desire, oh, this is a good thing. It's a good thing. Yeah. Hey. All ladies, young ladies, and young men, who want to be married. I feel the anointing for marriage. Stand up quickly, let me pray for you. Father, I ask you to give marriages to your children. Give them partners. Help them. Bless them, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Number three. Lack of activity. Activity. You see, ministry takes activity. Yeah. Activity. 
Without action, there cannot be children. Yeah. You see, one, one, one pastor, a young pastor, he met his wife. He had, his, he had traveled and his wife also came. They, they were together. And in the morning, he said, you know, last night I was wondering in my room when I was interacting with my wife, am I an acrobat or a gymnast <laughs> or an aerobics specialist? <laughs> what a question. Am I a gymnast? And am I doing gymnastics? What am I doing? You see, because to have children, people who have children, if you can video inside their room, you ask yourself, is this gymnastics I'm looking at? Is this aerobics I'm looking at? Hey! You see, and you ask yourself, all these gymnastics and aerobics lead to a child. And that's when, 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 you look at, when you look at to give birth to a church. So I have to go here and in the morning you have to call this person, go to this person's house, visit them, preach here, organize a program, collect instruments, do this. You ask yourself, also, am, I a, 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 am I a technician? Am I a, 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 a driver? Am I a telephonist? Am I a general? Am I the manager of the whole world? What am I? You ask yourself, you ask yourself, what am I? Crusade director. Am I a singer? Am I a, a producer of music? What, what am I? To be fruitful, there's so many activities. You, you even wonder which of these activities leads to the fruits. Yeah. Because yeah. at some point in the acrobatics, something will happen and then before you realize... The fruits are coming out. Wow. <laughs> True ministry. You wonder sometimes the different things that you do to be in the ministry and to have fruit. You just wonder. Since I've been in the ministry to bear fruit, there are so many things I've done. Engineering, architecture, music, singing, playing instruments, directing music, um, huh? videos, film production, huh? writing, I mean, so acrobatics, all these acrobatics, gymnastics, aerobics, which at a certain point, I may be tired to do. Somebody will, so, somebody will ask, what is, oh, just do whatever you want to do, it's okay. I may be tired of f- producing films. Because I'm involved in producing films. I may be tired of saying, oh, it's okay. Just do whatever. Or oh, I mean, music, so just sing a, sing a hymn. Just sing a hymn. Oh, God, our happy nature is past. I hope for years. What is all these songs you are saying? It's enough. You'll be tired of all the extra thing, acrobatic things. I said, look, pray that one day you'll marry and then you, you can even look at it and say, hey, Bishop said it, oh, acrobatics is what we are doing. <laughs> We are doing acrobatics. Sweating. Look, when people have sex, they sweat. Sometimes you say that they are sweating. They have even calories that you can lose. To, uh, calories. Calories. <laughs> Look, when you are going to bear fruit for God, you see that you are losing calories. Yeah, you are going here, going here. I remember when Bishop Eddie was here starting this church. I mean, he knew every road in in New York area. He was he drove. He said he had the Hyundai. He drove everywhere. One day I came. He was taking. So when he passes on this bridge, he will not pay a toll, and then he can pass here, and then this one. This he knew everywhere. He drive in the snow. Pick somebody from here, come back in the, there's a blizzard, park on the roadside, go here, pick this one, two people from Trenton, another person from here, come to the tunnel, go here, or to the church. I mean, you wonder what is this person? Is he a cab driver? I mean, what is he? That is how the activity to produce a church is so extreme. You even wonder what is the relationship between this and producing. 
And that's why sometimes when people are older and they're just trying to have, uh, be pregnant and the doctor will tell them have sex on this, they have sex on this. Many times it doesn't work. Because when they, they go, then they are, they are looking at each other and say, okay, we are supposed to do something now, you see. We are supposed to do something now. <laughs> hey, it's not easy, oh. <laughs> and there is, it's, there's, no, there's no feeling, there's no happiness, there's no mission. Oh. These are the hidden reasons why there is no fruit. Yeah. Because you see, that's why I'm saying that you may not want to accept it. But maybe you, 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 may, you, may, you may have become older than certain things. Maybe even to just move from one state to another. You are older than that. I don't know if there's anything like that, but maybe you are. Or maybe you don't want to accept that. Charlie, how can I be too old to move from one state to another at this age? Am I, am I dead? I mean, is my life over? It cannot be. You know, that's why for me, I, have, I have feel that, how can I be too old at my age? How am I older than certain things? It's not possible. That's why I do certain things. I say, I'm not too old. Hey, I can do it. I can do this. I can go here. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. When I can't do it, I'll know that I can't do it. But as of now, by the grace of God, I can do it. Yeah. But hidden inside us, we dishonestly don't want to accept that. We have actually passed away from the things that young people do. Excitement, activity. The next one is energy. Energy. You see that you don't feel like moving. Energium. Charlie, you need force and energy. Yeah. For the activities. See, maybe your energy levels have gone down, but you don't want to accept it. Yeah. A certain lady. She married a certain man. But this certain man was much older than her. Yeah. Yeah. So, but you see, at a certain age, you look almost like the same age. You can be 20 years older than somebody, but you look like you are the same age. But there, there are hidden things which are not the same. And as you get older, you get it, you start to see the difference. So I saw, where is your husband? Oh, he's, in, he's asleep. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't want to go out. He doesn't want to go out. He doesn't want to do anything. You see, you will not know that. You, you look similar, but there's actually an inner difference. So you want to go out. You want to move around. So, oh, I mean, are you going out? Eight o'clock. Eight, you're going out at eight o'clock. Eight o'clock, I need to sleep. I wake up in the morning to listen to my radio. <laughs> World News in the morning, BBC. <laughs> There's no energy. You're now going out at this time. Why? So the preaching has even started at 8 o'clock. So, oh, I'm really tired. I'm going to sleep. And they see that they are sleeping. Yeah. Yeah. You see, there is some type of sleep that comes because of your age. Yeah. When I was when I was when I was in university, I used to sleep in the evening. I mean, like when I go out, I don't know when there were unbelievers around. I used to visit my lovers and people come. Out. I just start to feel sleepy. I don't know whether they are boring to me. Yeah, I told. I used to say I don't. I've not been to disco before, so I don't know how to stay. Awake. 
But that was an interest in what, what, what they are doing. But there is another type of sleep from either your work, if you work in the mortuary with a lot of formalin, before you realize you are always sleeping. <laughs> I've noticed about people who work in the mortuary that you see they are always asleep. <laughs> or if you are older, you see that by 8 o'clock, sleep has started to come. Yeah. Sometimes I watch films with my, my daughter. And then, <laughs> Daddy, you slept. You slept throughout the whole. <laughs> you slept throughout the whole. <laughs> the other day I was arguing with her. I said, because there was a film. You know, there's a, it's a very good film for a pastor to watch. It's called Taken. I'm sure you have watched it before. Yeah. Because it shows how you must react when they take one of your members. <laughs> taking one and taking two. And I was, I was arguing with my, my daughter. She said, we have washed it. I said, I have never washed it. <laughs> said, we washed it, but you slept. <laughs> we washed it, but you slept. At the beginning of the film, you slept. And she, she sat there and watched the whole thing. I was sleeping by her. See, the old man is sleeping. <laughs> yeah, the little one has energy. Watching the thing. Look, this is the reality. When it comes to a certain point, you see that the energy that a young person has to do certain things, you, you, you stop having it. And that's why I'm saying to the people, to the pastors, don't let your young people become old and die you. Tell them, my friend, you cannot live and die here. You can preach as well as I do. People can preach, oh. People can preach. You, know, you guys, you are wild preachers, oh. And I don't have the opportunity to to, to listen to you preach. But I know the same things that I have, I use that's what I used to know. Many of you are very, very good preachers. Very good. In fact, it's a pity that maybe sometimes you're, you, you have not traveled much to see the kind of calling that you have in you. Wow. Oh, yeah. It's true. You know? That's why you need to keep moving. And sometimes when you don't move, you, you think you, are, you, are, you don't have a good ministry. But you, you are very good preachers. I'm, I'm quite sure of that. Oh, yeah. Very seasoned. I just have symptoms, you know, because of, of my position. I, I use symptoms more than anything else. Signs, symptoms, symptoms, signs, like that. And I know things from that. Yeah. Glimpses are enough to tell me what is going on. Yeah. You are very, very good preachers. And the children under you, you'll be surprised when they start to talk. You said you said, but they are explaining it better. Yeah. Giving some windows and some examples. Wow. These guys can preach. They can preach. Look, the Kodesh. I left the Kodesh for Bishop Saki and the other pastors there. It has grown bigger than when I was the one there. Bigger, bigger, bigger. You see, you are not the only one who can preach. Thank God they respect you that you even allow you to still preach. You get what I'm saying? But you are not the only one who can preach. These other people can preach and they can preach well. Uh, Pastor Eddie Fabian, he started a service, small service in the, in the, in the uh, chapel on the side. Turning point service. Now, the whole of the Jesus Cathedral is full. They have, yeah, early in the morning. Thursday in the morning, turning points. The whole place is full. Yeah. I have never, I've never been there before. They keep inviting me that I should come. I said, I'll, I'll come. One day I'll come. Then another of the pastors started a radio praying for people. And he had started a prayer service in the morning. Now the whole of the 
cathedral is also full with that prayer they, from radio. They call them. They are not even members of the church. They just come for prayers. He gathers all of them by talking on the radio. You, people can do things. They are under you with blankets and you say, you are nothing. Shut up. I'm here. I'm, I'm the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. You are not a Lord of Lords of anybody and a King of Kings. There must be missions. There must be energy. There must be excitement. There must be minshe. There must be youthfulness. There must be activities. Hey! There must be. This is our anniversary. And for our anniversary, we are saying shame on ourselves. We couldn't fill the whole of America in 20 years. Huh? We couldn't fill. Yes. And I'm, I'm, I'm watching. Do it. Ah, I look forward to having a camp in every place. This uh, Sandy Cove and uh, Chicago is past. We are going to other centers. Minsha hey. in the church. <laughs> wow. Are you ready to do the will of the Lord? Are you ready to do the will of the Lord? Wow. The next one. Repetition. Hmm. Repetition. Repetition, repetition, repetition. Yeah. Wow. Are you excited? Glory to God. What did I say? Repetition. Yeah. You see? Repetition hmm, is what? Repetition is doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. Rarely can you have a child by having sex once. You ask anybody who has two children, how many times did you have sex before you had two children? Hey. Ask any, ask, find anybody who has one or two children. How many times? Wow. Shh. Now listen. It's the same thing. You see, these are all hidden things. You see, it's not easy to bring them out. You see, the example that we are giving, it looks a bit funny. You know, but it's like that's the truth, that's the reality. There's a lot of repeated activity of the same thing. Repeated camps, repeated prayer meetings, repeated effort to start the church. Repeated crusade, repeated church services, repeated discussion, repeated visits, repeated talking of the same thing. That's why I'm repeating. I'm not preaching a new topic. You can eventually tell me what I should preach, what I'm going to preach today. You know everything. I keep repeating. I'm saying mission. This guy said I preached mission in Kumasi in 1999 without repeated activity you cannot have a child yeah you meet people you know so you are, we had sex once the doctor will tell you those of us who do have done in, in fertility you have to people have been known to be pregnant on every day of the cycle from day one to 28 pregnancy has occurred including in the period it's, yes for fact, every day it has, they've had experiments, it's shown that they've, had, they've been able to be pregnant on every day. 
So they will tell you, you must at least every other day, continuous. You can't just start whatever. And also, when you don't have often, the sperms, they, they, they change, they are sluggish. I'm going to come into the seeds soon. They are lazy. Yeah. They are not used to being ejected. They are used to resting. Yeah. Are you listening to me? That is why it is good. That's why, that's why, you see, that's why I was surprised. Where's Nadolin? Nadolin, where's Nadolin? Where's Nadolin? She's not here. Children's church? She just stepped out? That's why, that's why, that's why I'm, ask, I'm asking about the commandos. Because I know them from years ago. And I, I, because I, if you've been around and have repeated doses, I'm surprised you're not pregnant. I'm surprised there's no food because you've had repeated, repeated input, camp after camp after camp. I'm surprised. I'm surprised. You've had rep- repeated impartations, activities, energy, impartations, and still there's nothing out of you. Wow. It's a surprise. So I'm telling you, repetition is very important. Amen. Wow. Number. All these are hidden things, you know. So, excuse me. When you see somebody coming out with a pregnancy, he's been doing all these hidden things. Yeah. (laughs) The next one. Lack of many seeds. Like when you don't have a lot of the word of God in you. Or you don't receive many seeds. That is why when you receive a lot of seeds, isn't it? A lot of seed, you are likely to come for. So, so pastors, you would have wanted your children to listen to me preaching. Tell them, listen to Bishop preaching. Listen to the Makane. Listen to the camp. Not just to listen to yourself. Because it is many seeds. You see, if your sperm count, number of sperms in one mill is less than 40 million, usually. 40. Usually you don't get pregnant. Yeah. Usually, you don't get pregnant from experience. You can have 20 million, 5 million. Think about it. You need only one. Single one, not one million. And you can have a thousand spams, 100,000 spams. One million spams. It doesn't get pregnant. It's like a lot are needed. Are you with me? In order to get to just one pregnancy. That is why people who listen, you, you, you just meet somebody who listens to the word often, listens to the makana, you see that they become fruitful. It's almost automatic. Any woman whose vagina is loaded with spams, upon spams, loading, 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 loading. Am I saying something wrong? I don't know why they are laughing. Am I saying something wrong? It's not said in America like that or what? Seeds. Millions of seeds. Yeah, millions of seeds. That's why you must listen. You must read the books. People who are reading the books, they will be fruitful. Yeah. I meet people who are not in lighthouse. And they, 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 one pastor was t- talking to one of our pastors was saying that if this is the only thing I came to the world to do was to teach about lawyers, I don't know the effect that it has had. Yeah, they are powerful seeds. I know p- people who have built churches, reading mega church. 
One pastor, he said, look, the only book I had is Mega Church. I didn't know. He said, I didn't know you had written any other book. I thought you had only written one book. The Mega Church. The Kenyan. And that is all that I've had. He said, I've used it to start a church in my sitting room. And, I, and his church has more people than the people that are here on Sunday morning. You, you, you also know somebody like that? Show him the microphone. You see, seeds, people who receive seeds, their lives are affected. There is a pastor in Swaziland, it's called Apostle Jethro. Yeah. I mean, Bishop Saki preached in his church last year, December, and we're all there. I mean, he had a big, a big program. I mean, a big church. And he kept talking about mega church. I mean, when you say, Charlie, the church is too powerful, say, it's mega church. It's the book Mega Church. I mean, he has a, a big picture of the bishop in his office. When you enter, I mean, and he was telling us that as soon as he enters the office, he just say, oh, may the bishop smile on this ministry. Yeah, I mean, it, it has affected him so much. And the church is big in a town, not a city. And he has a big church. And he's always talking about Mega Church. He just got the book Mega Church. And that was it. And they don't know that there's another book. Yeah. <laughs> we are writing exams. Yeah. And there's, a, and there's a big church in Mozambique. I mean, it's the biggest church. I, I introduced Bishop's books to him about seven years ago. And um, after some time, I mean, when I gave him the books, initially he didn't know what I had given to him. So later I went and visited him and he was telling me of a problem. And I said, oh, that problem you are talking about is in one of the books I gave you. Because his assistant pastor, his main assistant pastor, had orangulized and told him that in six months I will show you what his church grow. I said, this one is in a book. <laughs> so I showed him the page of the book. He read his hair. What? Then from that day, he fell in love with the books. He read the books. Today as I'm talking to you, he has about 13,000 members on, on a Sunday service. Two years ago, he said, I need to come and see the bishop. So he flew all the way from Mozambique, came for ISI, and when he met Bishop, he knelt down and thanked him. I mean, it's, 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 it's fantastic. Wow. Fantastic. Amazing. Amazing. So you see, seed, seed, seed. People who get the seed, soak in the seed, they are blessed. The next one is the lack of a strong seed. David has also some, yeah, David. So next one is lack of a strong seed. Strong word makes you fruitful. Yes. Bishop, we have some new uh, prophets in Jamaica that got one of your books, Mega Church, and um, they've built great churches. And I remember when Bishop um, Joel came to Jamaica, uh, we went to a place to have a meal. And we're just there, and uh, we're just waiting to pay our bill. And then the waiter came and said, oh, somebody has sorted it out already for you. So we were wondering who it was. And then we realized that it was this guy. And then he came to see us and said, man, I wouldn't have had a, a ministry if it wasn't um, Bishop's books. And uh, I remember this uh, week, he sent me a message. He said that, man of God, I thank God for the loyalty message God has given to your bishop to carry. I would not have a ministry after last year, but thanks be to God, the steps were jammed last Thursday just for Bible study. Powerful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. His church was overflowing. The steps were jammed. Hmm. Wow. Seeds. So don't sit down and let outsiders come and benefit you. Outsiders are benefiting from the church, I tell you. They admire the church. Yeah. One pastor said to me, look, he said, if I was to come, he has his own church. He said, if I was to join any church today, I would join Lighthouse. Then he said, because there is me in the church. 
<laughs> mean share. Okay. Is there an N in it? <laughs> Mishi, this looks like Mishi. There's Mishi in the church. <laughs> We need our own African alphabet. <laughs> number seven, number, a strong seed. You need strong messages. Do you know that a strong, you see, if you listen to Sunday preaching and you listen to Makane preaching, you see that the Makane preaching is different. What's the difference? It's stronger, isn't it? It's stronger because I hear I'm telling you shame on you. Yes. Uh-huh. Over, in the, over church, I will be encouraging them always. But here I'll tell you shame. You didn't do well. 20 years anniversary. Look at where we are. I'm saying send, I'm sending you. I'm, I'm telling you the plain realities. Sunday people, we just encourage them, you know. <laughs> gradually, everything's going to be okay. God is with you. You know, things are all right. God is helping us one by one, slowly. So without a strong word, that's why I say to you pastors, don't be afraid of the makane. One guy said to me, I asked him, have you been listening to the makane? I said, no, 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 at all. I said, why? He said, oh, no, 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 no. I'm afraid of that. He said, if I listen to that thing, I cannot continue my career. That's what he said, if I listen to that thing, I cannot continue my career. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a strong seed. <laughs> if I listen to that thing, I cannot continue my career. <laughs> He said, I mean, he's the first person who I've ever told me. He said, please, at all. I don't listen to nothing. I said, I said, no, no, no. I cannot listen to this. When I listen to this, I cannot continue my career. Hey. Mercy. Amen. Now, number eight. Lack of a good receiving attitude. Good receiver ground. Now, I'm sorry to use these examples, but you see, if your vagina is acidic, full of acid, when the sperm gets there, it will be killed. Because of the sharp acid that is killing the sperms. No matter the sperm that comes in that. It's a suicidal mission to enter the acidic atmosphere of you. Hey. That is why around the time of ovulation, the mucus that is produced in the changes and the pH changes and becomes less acidic. But the acid also helps to kill infections and bacteria and certain things to keep it down. But when it's time to receive the spams, I say, no, 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 change the atmosphere. And blow. Ah. Pastor, my attitude has changed. As soon as I hear your voice, my attitude changes. I become open. I become open. I flow. I change when I, when I hear the word. Once it's the word of God, it's like I soften. I just relax. I just change. But when it's not the word of God, I'm ascetic. Hey. And some of you, you brought that ascetic spirit to the church. When the, when the word is coming, it's like you have an acid to pour on the pain. Hey. How can the word of God prosper? If I tell you to go out and reach the world and you tell me that I'm preaching against honest work, I'm trying to spoil your career. Ask those who have traveled and gone to start churches whether I've spoiled their careers. Hmm? Even in 
America here. Has this spoiled your career by going? Has it not even rather improved your career? Hmm? And your marriages. Charlie, do you know how people divorce in America? Huh? Do you know how people divorce in America? One friend of mine told me, said, if I had not come to America, I would not be divorced. Because I came to America, that's why I'm divorced. But we have divorce here. We have this type of speak your mind, a right, a human right, so many things. Even your children would have become homosexual if it was not for the church. Your child just has to play, maybe wear a wig one day or like as if they are playing boys and girls or they are doing something. No, they just, oh, you are a girl. You are a girl. Yeah, and before you realize, it's like, Charlie, before you realize, you see that you have turned into a, 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 a woman. So, you better thank the Lord. You know, these are the hidden things that we often are not honest about. That actually we have an ascetic environment into which the words are coming into. And it's killing them with sarcastic, sarcastic killer comments. Sarcastic killer words and killer ideas. My goodness. Neutralizing the power of the word that is coming. You are killing, counteracting with comments and words and saying, oh, this one, this, this and that. Hey. Ascetic attitudes. My God, my God. (laughs) Number nine. The presence of antagonistic people and elements hinder your fruitfulness. Antagonistic. Some have antagonistic antibodies around the cervix. So when the sperm comes, apart from the acid that is waiting for them, there are antibodies. Eh? Antibodies which are supposed to fight infection are fighting the word of God as if the word of God is an infection. Yes. Do you understand antibodies? Have you heard of antibodies? You know, when you are given an immunization jab, you, 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 it, it is to stir up your body to produce antibodies. So when you, when you come to Africa and you are bitten by mosquitoes, you, if you've been there for some time, you already have antibodies against the malaria infection or any infection for that matter. Do you get it? And unfortunately, some people don't get pregnant because the woman has antibodies around her cervix, around the womb, that treats sperms in a bad way when they come. When the, when the sperm comes, oh, I'm coming for a possible pregnancy. And they say, no, it's an infection. Kill him. Oh. No, 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 it's an infection. Kill him, kill him, kill him. And they rise and they kill the, the sperms. And the sperm cannot go beyond a certain point. Wow. I'm telling you. Some of you, I tell you, you have antibodies to my messages. And you see, when you hear it again and again and you resist, and you, re- you develop more antibodies. Mercy. Strong responses. Yeah, you become more and more resistant. Yeah. These are the, the reasons why fruitfulness doesn't happen. Because sometimes it, you develop a strong response. Even, even fundraising. So the people come, they've got antibodies to the fundraising. Acidic, this thing for the fundraising. Acid for the fundraising. And then antibodies are waiting. It's like if they say this, I will give this. I will pour this on it. Wow. These are the, you see, and Paul said, look, media, I renounce all the hidden things that will not let me do well in the ministry. I renounce all of them. Yeah, I just cancel all of them. Because it was, this is how, go to verse 1. It says in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 1, it says, Therefore, 
seeing we have this ministry, God has given us a wonderful ministry as we have received mercy. We, we are not fainting. And you see the semicolon. This thing is called semicolon. Let me show you. Go back. This thing is semicolon. This one. Semicolon. Which, me, which, 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 which means, which means. That's what it means. Let me explain. How I've received this ministry and my, I'm flowing with the ministry. How did I do that? Then it, it, it goes on. I'm not fainting. How, how come I'm not fainting? He says, I renounced hidden things. That deception does not allow me to often come out with dishonesty. We, we rarely accept that we have antibodies to the word of God. We rarely, we, 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 we. you know, when you listen to somebody for some time, you can develop antibodies. Yeah. I remember, um, I don't know whether I should, I should give that example. But you, you, you will notice sometimes you, you listen to somebody at a point that when you listen to a person, you are not being blessed. Sometimes you realize that you've developed antibodies. Yeah. And then at a point when you listen, you start to be blessed again. And sometimes you realize that the immunity has gone down. And so you are able to receive again. It's true. Even, even, even on a Sunday, you know, recently I came to preach at the Kodesh about uh, watch and pray. They were very receptive and very happy to have me. You see, because their immunity had gone down. The antibodies were reduced. And when you are used to a pastor, one day I preach, I, I preach at the uh, cathedral, it was a Sunday morning, and after an American man who was visiting came up to, to talk to Bishop Saki and said to him, you know, if this was in America, nobody would sit down to listen to this powerful man. I was preaching about David's success. He said, it, it is awesome, fantastic. We were surprised, awesome and fantastic. Everybody looking at you as if you are preaching to a cow. I said, it's, it's an amazing revelation what this, what this man is, is preaching. It's fantastic. He said, if we were in America, people would not be sitting down. As the people are sitting down. Do you know what you have? Yeah. You see, when the people have developed antibodies, they just look at them. The most powerful HIV that is coming, you've got an antibody for you. Yeah. Smallpox, you can be a killer, but we've got antibodies for you. Whatever you can, we have something to you just neutralize and we'll be watching that. Most of your church members have antibodies. That is why you should let some of the other people preach. When younger people, let them preach. And say that when you come again, you see that there will be a message. I'm going to start another church. When I went to start the first love church, you see how the Kodesh will say, hey, one day I was meeting with some first, one of my members came from the Kodesh. He came there and was surrounded by these young first love people. She came and said, you are the people who have stolen our bishop. Eh? You are the people that have stolen our bishop. And it almost became a fight. I said, look, please. Please. Yeah. <laughs> you see, they, they, don't know, they don't know how powerful your messages are. The day that you step away and they say, ha, ah, it was good. I had to make so many times I preach in my own church and I look at these people don't appreciate me. Sometimes when I go outside the church and I preach, ah, the response, yeah. One, one uh, what do you call it, that I went to preach in Korea. I preached prayer. Small, they have invited me for crusades in Korea. Korean <laughs> I preached 20 minutes prayer. You were there that day. Yeah. They have invited me to come to Korea for crusades. They said, please come. They said, it was so powerful. Yeah. It's because some of you have developed antibodies. Yes. Apart from the acid. Yes. Hey. Yes. <laughs> acid and antibodies. Yeah. Combination. This is why people don't get pregnant. You pour 
70 million sperms into acid. And the acid will say, no problem, coagulation. We are just going to kill them all now. Kill them all. And the acidic members will be standing ready. Have you killed your session? We have killed all on the left, all on the right, all on the right. There are some three left that are going. Antibodies, send them to the kill them, finish. No way for this word. Hey. No way for this message. <laughs> Wow. Is it not amazing? Okay. The next one, number 10. Poor timing. Poor timing kills fruitfulness. Yeah, poor timing. Look at the time that you are coming. Do you see? To bear fruits. Huh? What timing? You have come on day six. Well, you should have come later, day 13, 14. You come on day 27. It's late now. It's late now for this seed to, to, to work. Even if you get through the acid and you get through the antibodies, it's 20, day 27. You are two weeks late. Young people, don't wait till it's too late. Oh. Pastors, don't let your children pass a certain state where they cannot do much for God. The youngest, freshest, beautiful, handsome, nicest, they are the best. Intelligent. When a person is intelligent for school, he's also intelligent for ministry. Don't say my child. Don't, listen, don't say my child is too good for ministry. My son had first class in England, university. First class, not second, not an African first class. First class in law. First, first of all, you can't even get the law. And in the law, he had first class. Yeah, first class, sharp. Yeah, straight. Yeah, if you know what is first class, is, we have whatever, those of you who've been to university, you know what it's what is about. Yeah, and it's ministry. Yeah, they are pastors. There's a lot that's too clever for the church. You know, it's too clever for ministry. What do, you, what do you mean by that? When the Bible says in, uh, in the song that we sing, the cross, the dearest and the best. What, what is that song? On a hill far away. And then what does it say? Stood an old rugged cross. The emblem of suffering and shame. Oh, and I love, I love that, that old cross. Where the dearest where the what? and where best. Where the what? The dearest and the best. The best in school. The dearest of the children. For a world of sinners was slain. You see... Jesus is not the only person called son of God. And some people believe he's not the only son of God. The Bible says the sons of God came into the women. Yeah. The Bible says, and the sons of God gathered where the Lord was, and the devil also came there. Yeah. But Jesus is the only begotten son of God. He's the dearest and the best. He is the one who was given for us. God gave everything. That's why he also tells us, give yourself holy. Don't hold back. Don't hold back. A world of sinners. Wicked people. And you wouldn't give yourself to Los Angeles. From New York to Los Angeles. You can't do it. From Atlanta to LA or San Jose. You cannot do it. From, from New York to Hawaii, the same America. Your stammering has come. Your epilepsy has come. Your high fever has come. Your acid has come. Your antibodies have come. Hey, why? 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 Why?
this is the reason why a person cannot have. Look, I have practiced medicine and I've practiced being a doctor. All these things I'm saying, I know them firsthand. Yeah, this is why people don't get pregnant. It's not, it's not one thing. I mean, most of the things are hidden. You can't see. When a person comes, everything looks normal. Everything looks normal. There's a lot of things. May God touch your heart, I beg you. May God touch you. Renounce all hidden things that are keeping you in barrenness and emptiness and fruitlessness. In Jesus' name, amen. Wrong timing. Amen. Wrong positioning. <laughs> yeah. Wrong positioning. That's why some of you are not very much fruit. Wrong positioning. You are in the wrong place. Or you've positioned yourself in the wrong way. Yeah. You have to change your position. Because we have two types of wombs. Or not two types, but the womb is, you see, if, 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 if a woman is lying down like this, if a woman is lying down here, you get it? The womb is like this. You see my hand here like this? The womb is pointing down like this. This is a normal, or is one of the position of the. So when you when the sperm comes in, it comes to lie here, below this, and then it climbs up like this. Did you see this side? Didn't see. I should show it like this. If the man is lying down flat like this, the womb is like like this inside your body or down here. It's like this. So when the sperms come, they come and they are deposited here. Down here, then it climbs up and goes. So this is this is this is the normal. Did you see it? But some people, the womb is like this. This got retroverted. So when the sperm come here, it goes to the back. It now has to climb up here. It's very far for them. This is very far for them. It's like going to San Francisco. It's very far. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it has to climb up like this and come back and now enter. Do you understand? And some of them, they just can't climb hills. They can't climb hills. Yeah. They are not, they are not into mountain climbing. Yeah, they're not into mountain climbing. Are you understanding? So if you are, your womb is like this, then it means you should turn around. When you turn around, then the, the womb that was like this will turn around like this. Into a new position. <laughs> and now the stems will not have to do mountain climbing. Wow! Yes! Yes! Yeah! So some of you, it's just the positioning. Where you've positioned yourself. You position yourself in a town where you cannot bear fruits. And maybe you have to humble yourself and go to another place where you can position yourself another way. And then you realize that, Charlie, you are moving. The stems will be flowing. Oh. And then you see that now the messages that come from them, they are flowing. I mean, people are blessed, people are receiving. You position yourself in a way that based on where you are placed. Yeah. 
No, no, you see that you, you can go into somebody's bedroom and you can, if you, are, if you know what you are talking about, say that based on how you position yourself, in this, you will not be pregnant. Yeah, it's too far for the sperm. This, this sperm is ca- counting the Swiss Alps. It's climbing mountains. You cannot climb. You cannot climb it. Yeah. So when you reposition yourself, so that reposition another state, reposition another country, reposition, you suddenly think, ah, but is it not the same person? But you see, once you replace your reposition yourself, and somebody may laugh at you and say, what is this position? Are you a dog? Are you a cat? Are you a whatever? So, look, be humble. Be humble. It takes humility to be positioned properly. It takes, it takes humility to be positioned properly. If you are not humble, you cannot, have, you cannot have a child. A child is not born from the mouth. It's born from another place. Yeah, it takes humility. Yeah, positioning. <laughs> these are the hidden things. These are all this going on in the house. It's all hidden. Nobody knows what you are doing. Yeah, you will never know. You never know. You never know the acid that is in your, your spiritual vagina. The antibodies that are antagonistic to the message, antagonistic to... I mean, if I'm preaching, uh, people are happy, then you say, oh, these, you, these people are young and easily impressionable. It's an antibody. It's an antibody. It's an acid. Yeah, it's pouring the acid on the word. Yeah. Yeah. So, Charlie, look, to, 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 to bear fruits, you have to give yourself all out. When they say, stoop, you stoop. Say, stand, you stand. Say, lie, you lie. Change your style, you change your style. Acrobatic, you do it. You give yourself all out. <laughs> hey. Number 12. Lack of nakedness. <laughs> Lack of nakedness. Yeah. Lack of nakedness. Lack of nakedness. Yeah. How can you bear? How can you bear fruit with jeans? Huh? How can you bear fruit with jeans? You cannot with a belt. You see, many of us are not bare. Our lives are covered. Rita, come to me. Come to me. I'll show you, I'll show you a secret. I'll show you a secret. Mm. 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 Is this a typical person? She's just like me. She's showing us only three things. Only her face. This one. And this one. The rest is covered. How can she bear fruit? There must be more to see. (laughs) Hey! There must be more to see. 
can't just show us your face and just one little part of your head. We can't, we can't even see the arms. Just this one little and this one little and then just the face. And the hair, finish. The rest is absolutely covered. Do you think she can bear fruit? No. That's why openness. Be yourself. You see, to bear fruit, you have to be yourself. You come and say, just as I am. And you come, this is how I am. This is how I am. Yeah. With your faults. And your funny Look, many of you, when you take off your clothes, you realize that your shape has changed. (laughs) My God, my God, my God, my God. (laughs) Yeah. Realize that Charlie, your shape is different. You look different. A certain brother, when he got married, I was discussing with him after how how was it? And so he said, When I saw hair and I saw the breasts, he said, I just didn't want to think about it again. <laughs> I said I decided I'll not I'll not concentrate on that again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I decided not to think about it again. Yeah. Those are the reasons why we keep ourselves covered. But you have to somehow almost disgrace yourself to bear fruits. Yeah, you don't have to be ashamed. You stand with the three people in your church and you say, glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. We are, we are so excited. You, God is here. Anniversary. You'll be celebrating five years anniversary with 20 people. So we are having our anniversary. This is our anniversary. 20 of us. This is our anniversary. We are, we are celebrating our anniversary. Hey, no shame. No shame. You can't be ashamed when you want to bear fruit. I tell you, look, this is what I've been preaching, I've been praying, I've been doing my best. It's tw- it's five years and we are 20. It's a, bl- it's a blessing. There's no shame. Hey. You cannot be, you cannot be intimidated. All the things that people laugh at you about, you have to say, look, I don't care. I don't care. If your stomach is very big, come with it like that. Say, Lord, this will not Yeah. See that now, Charlie? Things have changed. You say, oh, there's a reason. Somebody was saying that the stomach is there, so it's used to use it for fatherly uh, cushions, for fatherly hugs. <laughs> wow. All these are hidden. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yeah. How many points do you have? 13. Lack of openness. You may be naked, but you will not open up. Yeah. A certain lady, 
she had been married for so many years and her husband died. And after her husband died, five years later, somebody came and said, I want to marry you. And then she was telling her fellow widows, she had a group of widows, <laughs> that they had been meeting <laughs> in a widow's fellowship. You know, not official widows, but they were all widows. And she was telling him, look at this man. He said, I should marry him. How? Hmm? He said, my husband was sick for five years before he died. I was nursing him. You think I can go and be a nurse again at this my age? Then she said, and moreover, this open and closed business. I have even forgotten how to do it. You see, she, as an experienced wife, fruit bearer with children abroad, was saying that it is an open and closed business. <laughs> open up, close. Open up, close. Open up, close. That's a summary of a grown-up. Yeah. Young people will not call it that. But an experienced fruit bearer will say, look, it's about opening up. And if you are pastors, you realize that it's when you were open to me. That's when you bore fruit. You were open. When I preach, you believe it. Bishop when you close up, you stop bearing fruit. You may have without acid, without, but you don't open up. You don't, don't receive. Yeah. And so that's why I said, open and close. I've forgotten how to do it. She doesn't even call sex love, making love. She said, no, open and close. <laughs> it's a hidden thing. Hey, fruitfulness is a very complex thing. Oh. There are so many things that make us fruitful. And finally, giving yourself holy. Yeah. You see, when you give yourself holy, you see that you are now able to flow 100%. And without doing that, you cannot bear fruit. It summarizes everything. Give your whole body, your whole self. When you go to give birth, your whole body gives, gives birth. You can't say, I'll send somebody to give birth for me. And I'll come. I'll come later. You have to give yourself wholly to whatever you're going to do. So, giving yourself partially, partly, we're not going to let you bear fruit. How many are going to renounce all these hidden things? So, you see, what you have had is what we call is gynecology. It's fertility classes. Yeah, fertility classes. I've had fertility lecture. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, how you actually have physical babies. There must be babies. There must be missions. There must be fruits. And I see it coming in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Give thyself, give thyself wholly, give thyself wholly to him, oh, give thyself wholly, give thyself. Give thyself holy. Give thyself holy to Him. Give thyself holy. Give your heart. Give your mind. And give Him your love and affection. 
Give your treasures, give your education, give him your personality, give thyself, give thyself wholly, give thyself wholly to him. Give thyself holy. Give your best time. Give your youthfulness. Give him your life and profession. Give your money, your time and energy. Give him everything you've got. Give thyself, give thyself holy, give thyself holy to him, oh, oh. give thyself holy, oh, oh, oh. give thyself. Holy to him, oh, give thyself holy. Give thyself, give thyself to prayer. Give thyself to the word. Give thyself to spirituality. Give thyself to the word. Give thyself. Give thyself only. Give thyself only to him. Oh, give thyself only. Come on and give the Lord a chance while you give yourself. to godliness give thyself to purity and give thyself to sanctification and to the holiness code why don't you give yourself give thyself only Why don't you give yourself, give thyself, give thyself only, give thyself only to him, give thyself only, give thyself. Exhortation, give thyself to reading and doctrine, give thyself to the word, give thyself, give thyself for me, give thyself for me to him. Give thyself holy. Anybody want to give yourself to Jesus? Come on. Give thyself. Give thyself holy. Give thyself holy to him. Oh, give thyself holy. One more time. Oh! 
prayed three times in the garden if it be your will O Lord let this cup pass over me but he said nevertheless not my will be done but your will be done Lord I will accept your perfect will for my life today yes you hold my destiny you have a purpose for me you have a plan for me I want to follow your will I love your perfect will I love the plans you have for me I just love the mystery of your will Just take my hand and stay with me Oh Lord, I trust in your word I believe in your word I'll go all the way, yes Lord, I will accept your perfect will for my life today You hold my destiny You have a purpose for me oh, You have a plan for me I want to follow your will oh, Cause you hold my destiny You have a purpose for me oh, you have a plan for me I want to follow your will Every day, every night When I'm down on my knees Praying here That your will may be done And your purpose fulfilled in my life I will follow where you go I'll follow I will do what you say, I follow, I will listen to your voice, I'll follow forever, 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 and I'm glad to follow you, you hold my destiny, you have a purpose for me, you have a plan me I want to follow your will yes you hold my destiny you have a purpose for me oh, you have a plan for me I want to follow your will it's all right I'll do what you say it's all right I'll follow your will what you say it's all right I'll follow your will oh it's all right I'll do what you say it's all right I'll follow you follow you oh it's all right I'll do what you say it's all right I'll follow you all the way cause you hold my destiny you have a purpose for me a plan for me oh so I want to follow your way are you enjoying the music are you enjoying the music or the preaching <laughs> there is me saying the church you want more music Okay, Ida, come. But I want us to take an offering before we go for breakfast. Amen. It's breakfast time. Almost breakfast time. But I want us to take a... Sit down. I hear when you, when you stand, you don't give a lot. So sit down. <laughs> you want what? Yeah. 
Everybody give a good offering. When we come back in the afternoon, we're going to do some small fundraising for healing Jesus. Amen. Are you excited about that? I want you to give to support the crusades. Amen. But we are blessed. How many have already received what you need to receive from this camp? What is God telling you at the camp? There must be missions. You have had your mission. Let your children have their mission. We want, we are ashamed to celebrate our 20th anniversary. We are not going to buy a cake for this one. When we have all the states and all the places covered in America, then we are going to have, we can get a cake and come and have, which city shall we have there? Okay. We can easily have it in Hawaii. Yeah. Because our pastor there will be hosting us in Hawaii. Yeah. On a cruise. Yeah. We can also cruise around. You're waving at all the states. But until then, we are, are we not embarrassed that we have? Yeah, we, are, we are ashamed. 20 years. You know? Yeah. So everybody, take out a good offering, please. Take out a good offering. Have you taken out your offering already? Show it to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, do you think for such wonderful music? How many are enjoying wonderful music? You cannot even get such music on there. There's, there's no recording of such music anywhere. Hey! You will not get pop. All right. There must be missions. There must be pastors. There must be going. There must be minche. In the church. Lift up your offering. Father, we thank you for this offering. In Jesus' name, amen. I want a booster. I, I don't know. Don't take the offering yet. I want a booster. Boost your offering. Boost, boost it. Boost the offering. Boost it. Don't receive the offering yet. Take Hold the basket, please. Hold the basket, ashes. I want booster. Money. Coins. Anything. Just boost what you are giving. And Ida will sing a nice song for us. Lift up your booster. Let me pray over the boosting, the booster of the offering. Father, thanks for this booster as we give it in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, Ashes, receive the offering and the booster all combined. Now that I know there's only one God in all of the earth, you're my only God, and I want you to know my love for you, I'll never let go, you're my only God. All I want is to serve you. If I live my life again, I'll choose you. It's been worth worth living for you. Lord, I love you. There's no one above you. You gave your son. You gave your love. Oh, and you turned my life all around. You gave your life to I'll serve you for the rest of my days. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah.
my Lord and my God. I can't believe that you died for me. What a sacrifice. And the Lord in return, I'll serve you for the rest of my life. I will build your church. All I want is to serve you. If I live my life again, I'll choose you. It's been worth worth living for you. Lord, I love you. There's no one above you. You gave your son. You gave your love. Oh, and you turned my life all around. You gave your life to send me free. I'll serve you for the rest of my days. Whoa, 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 yeah, yeah. All on my vision to do your mission. Oh, all on my will to do your will. I'll preach your word. I'll build your church, and I'll do it again and again, my Jesus. You gave your son, you gave your love, oh, and you turned my life all around. You gave your life to set me free, and I'll serve you for the rest of my days. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, appreciate her more. What a fresh morning. Too powerful. Too powerful. Is that Ming Che? Ming Che. So you have to say it with the with the, yeah, a, a, a sense of fullness, you know. Show it to your neighbor. Say there's Ming Che. Powerful. Hallelujah.